Okay, welcome to our New York Giants Preservation Meeting, uh, Society Meeting for today, uh, January 25th, 2024. We have a return speaker, Paul Rogers, who did such a wonderful job in November. Uh, now he's coming back to talk about Davey Williams tonight. Um, I need a few minutes, though, to talk first about what's been going on. Um, today, I was supposed to have a meeting with some of the giant executives yesterday on Zoom. They uh, postponed it and moved it up to today. So I had a Zoom with them regarding uh, the 2424 Willie May, the Say Hey Willie Mays Appreciation Day. So I'll fill you in on, on what was discussed on their end. Um, above the Willie Mays statue at Oracle Park, there's going to be a banner dedicating the day to him. The scoreboard in the stadium is going to be lit up, everything about Willie Mays. The City Hall is going to be black and orange uh, in honor of him. Uh, Mayor Breed will declare a declaration of uh, Willie's Say Hey Willie Mays Appreciation Day. There's going to be a massive press release where uh, luminaries like Ken Griffey Jr., Steph Curry, and other greats in all sports will be saying uh, stuff about um, Mr. Mays. Uh, they're going to also start promoting this Rickwood field game. Um, just a lot of uh, different, different stuff. Um, if any of you uh, get John Shea's uh, work, um, there's going to be an article on either Monday or, I'm sorry, Sunday or Monday, and we are featured in that article. So look for that. As far as us... We are going uh, to have our special Zoom on Wednesday of next week. Um, if everybody would wear Giant stuff or Mets stuff and May stuff, you don't have to, but it'd be, I think it'd be really nice. We are going to rename our group the Willie Mays Preservation Society. I already have a, a poster made that will replace the one behind my um, shoulder. Um, we are also uh, still collecting money. Um, we are going to dedicate it, it to the Say Hey Foundation. As of this exact moment, we have $953.24. And some people have told me that checks are in the mail. So I'm thinking probably close to 1200 bucks would be probably what, what will, it will wind up to be. Uh, there was a blurb in the New York Post on Sunday by Mike Vaccaro talking about this group and if people wanted to reach out to us. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, it did not mention the 2424, uh, but uh, it does say that we're going to be uh, doing this thing in appreciation of Willie Mays and that if anybody wanted to contact uh, the group, they should look us up. And actually, one person did, and that person was Ed Randall. I don't know if any of you are familiar with him. He did uh, he did a baseball show in New York for years, and he now he does a a, a serious radio show uh, called Remember When. And so he emailed me and said, "I don't know who this is, but can you call me?" So I called him, and he asked me to talk about our group tomorrow at four o'clock. Uh, so if anybody. Is interested? It's on channel eighty nine, I believe, uh, and we'll be discussing. We want to know about this group and stuff, so we'll be discussing the group stuff, uh, talking about Willie Mays, etc. And again, anybody in in the vicinity of Cooperstown next week, I'm going to be speaking on the third. Uh, the last thing I got to go over. Uh, Frank Lewis has told me this, and I got another email. Uh, saying that uh, somebody in this group's mail has been hacked. Uh, my name appears. Please, if my name appears, just take your cursor and go over it. If it doesn't say my email address that you all know, don't open it. Uh, you know, there's some people out there who just like doing that stuff. So uh, she showed me it, and then she said, look, it doesn't say Gary's right email address. So just, just a word for the wise. Uh, with that said, Paul, I'm sorry I took so much time, but this Willie Mays thing is turning into this big thing. 
I don't want to take away any of your time, but let's all welcome back Paul Rogers. Again, Paul wrote about Davey Williams in this great publication, and he was one of the editors of it. Paul, welcome back. Thank you so much for joining us. Give it up for no, Paul th <laughs> Thank you for having me back. <laughs> Can you uh, uh, have, uh, Gary, can you uh, have, share this? Have Absolutely. Me, uh, host, see if I can bring up a PowerPoint. There you go, Paul. It's all yours. <laughs> okay, I'm going to get have to get my wife to come help again. Okay. <laughs> yeah. It's not coming up. Okay, so um, so they made you a co-host, right? Okay, so see right down there where there's a green button that says share screen. Click on that, and then click over here where it says share. And that shares the whole thing, right? So. Thank you, Mrs. Rogers. But, <laughs> or if, I mean, the other thing you can do is stop share. If you want it just to be the one, the PowerPoint. Well, it's where PowerPoint usually is. What happened? There you go. Is that good? Got it? Okay. <laughs> I've just got it set where it's sharing anything that's on your screen. Like, so you may want to close your email or something like that. Thanks. Okay. Sorry. No one's had the problem. Uh, so, um, Thanks for having me back. And um, one of the reasons uh, I really wanted to edit the book on the 51 Giants was because I wanted to give uh, Davey Williams his due. Uh, and so uh, I picked his biography to write. And uh, I I got to know Davey uh, well in the last uh, decade of his life. Uh, and we went to lunch um, with a group of other guys. Uh, I, I I got him to 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 join a one of our a group of old, old fogies uh, every we, a couple of months or so, and he uh, he was just a, a delight a delight to be around. I went I went to his uh, his funeral services. Um, he was he was on oxygen most of the time much of the time I knew him, and uh, but he would he was a very proud guy, and he would he would come into lunch without without. <laughs> Without his oxygen, he was and, and was determined to make it through, and he did. He had a great um, old-fashioned Southern twang, um, and he and he was uh, just uh, a really nice, nice man who loved being remembered. So um, he's from Dallas, and of course, I'm in Dallas, um, and, uh, and so I know a little bit about his background. This is a. Uh, photo of him at Sunset High School uh, in Dallas and in, in, in the Oak Cliff part of Dallas. He was a uh, he was a great uh, high school athlete for, for uh, sport star and uh, uh, was a running back in football, even though he was a, uh, he was five nine, probably 135 or 40 pounds in in high school. He uh, and he and Sunset was a power. Uh, house in those days and they won a state championship uh, they just won a state championship in baseball and they won a state championship in football and they played uh highland park in the playoffs um three straight years in and sunset won one and highland park won two why that's sort of significant is that highland park had doak walker and bobby lane uh so it was davy it was davy williams versus doak and bobby lane uh, so those, I would love to get films of those games if they exist. Um, so um, after a senior year in high school, he was selected to uh, play, to represent Texas in the uh, the Esquire um, All-Star Game uh, that, that was held, uh, I think, normally at the Polo Grounds. You know, it was East versus West. It was Esquire Magazine, Boys All-American Baseball Game. Uh, and so he was on the 45 team. And if you remember, um, I'm sure a lot of you know this, that they were typically managed by by former big leaguers, uh, megastars. And uh, in the 45 game, 
Ty Cobb uh, managed the West and Babe Ruth managed the East. And so Davey uh, was managed by Ty Cobb and he, uh, in the first, and he was uh, the leadoff hitter and he walked and, and then, and then slid hard into second on a d- double play ground ball. And the, uh, the uh, shortstop on the other side came down on his hand and nearly tore the nail off of his, one of his fingers. And this was like the first top of the first inning. Uh, and um, so Davey was afraid that Cobb would pull him out of the game. He wouldn't get to play. So he went off when he got back to the dugout, he, he went over to the corner. This is sort of gross, but he tore the nail, the rest of the nail off and taped it, taped his, taped his uh, finger uh, and didn't play eight innings of the game and, and managed to get a, a hit off Kurt Simmons, who was pitching for the East. Uh, and so uh, the next morning, uh, Davey was in the lo- lobby of the New Yorker, uh, and Ty Cobb came over and asked to see his hand. And so Davey peeled off the tape and showed it to him. And I guess that impressed uh, Krusty O. Cobb uh, because a couple of months later, Davey got a letter from Cobb telling him how he had endeared himself to him by not letting anybody see his injury and just playing through it. Uh, so a number of uh, teams wanted to sign Davey, uh, and uh, they <laughs> the next day uh, he had he had intended to go to the U- University of Texas on a baseball scholarship, and uh, so he wasn't interested in signing a pro contract. And he uh, so he he went to the Bronx Zoo because he'd always heard heard about the Bronx Zoo and he wanted to see it. Um, and then and then when he got back to Dallas. Um, he learned that he was about to be drafted, even though the war was winding down. He was still a prime draft age, just graduated from high school. So, so he decided to enroll at SMU uh, as a student uh, while he waited to get drafted, and he decided to sign a pro contract. Uh, well, I'm sorry, he waited. He, he decided to sign a pro contract, and then he decided to go ahead and enlist to get his service obligation out of, out of the way. Uh, and so he signed with the Atlanta Crackers. And I think it's sort of interesting. Uh, he could have signed with any number of major league uh, outfits, but he signed with the Crackers because their scout uh, convinced him that uh, that would be his easiest way to the major leagues. That if he, you know, if he signed with the Cardinals, he can be blocked by Shane East, and, you know, and, but if he signed with the Crackers, uh, whenever, if he, if he did well, uh, they would sell him to whatever major league team uh, needed a second baseman, uh, and this that would be a quicker route to the to the big leagues. So uh, he signed with the uh, the Crackers, and and he when he got out of the service, uh, which was I guess about uh, fourteen months or so, he trained as a paratrooper at, at Fort in Fort Benning, Georgia, but got out because the war was uh, getting it was over, and <laughs> by the time he reported for for uh, duty. Um, and uh, so he he was able to join the Crackers for spring training in, in 47. Uh, and the Crackers uh, sent him to Waycross in the Class D Georgia Florida League. You know, they had working, the, the, those minor league teams at the higher echelons had their own working agreements in those days. So he did, he, he did extremely well uh, in, in 47. Uh, uh, scored a league leading 147 runs, batted 282. Uh, got married in the offseason to his high school sweetheart Joy, Joy Elizabeth Reed, and uh, um, and then uh, in 47 he was bumped up to Class B in Pensacola, the Pensacola Flyers, and he hit 308 there. Again, led, led the league in runs scored. That um, <clears throat> at, at that point the Giants bought him. Uh, for from the crackers for fifty thousand dollars and two players uh with the understanding that he would play spend the 1949 season in atlanta with the crackers um and so he did uh he hit 290 for the crackers uh and for the third year in a row he was the league's all-star second baseman and that earned him a late season call up uh, with the giants um where he hit 240 in, in in 13 games um his first major league home run was pretty pretty exciting. Uh, September nineteenth, uh, tenth inning tie game, uh, 
um, two out and a runner on, and he hit a two run home run against the, the Pirates in Forbes Field to to give the Giants a six four victory. Um, so uh, it looked like he was going to be the second baseman of the future for the Giants, but uh, but unfortunately for him, uh, in in December forty nine, the Giants uh, trade traded. Uh, uh, for Eddie Stanky in a six six person deal, traded for Eddie Stanky for the Braves. So Stanky's now blocking uh, Davy uh, at at second base for the uh, with the Giants. Um, so he has a good spring training, but they still send him out to Minneapolis. Um, and he and he and he, and he played the, the uh, fifty season uh, with Minneapolis um, and. Uh, uh, had a, had a, an, another really solid year, hitting 280, again leading the league in runs scored. It, I don't know if, if some of you, I'm sure know if Minneapolis. I've, I've been to that side of that old ballpark, but uh, whether it was a short porch, but he had 17 home runs and a 450 slugging average with the Millers, uh, and uh, and he he also led the uh, so 17 home runs uh, for somebody that's five nines uh, and, and slight was, was, was showing a lot of muscle. Uh, that however, also was the year that he suffered a, a back injury that, that really ended up um, curtailing his career. He in a collision with the right fielder. Uh, he, um, he got hit uh, with, by the knee, by a knee in his lower spine. And, and it was, it, it's just started a, uh, a chronic back condition that, uh, uh, plagued him unfortunately for the rest of his career um he uh he Paul, still got Paul, uh, did you want to uh, advance any of the slides i do i'm about to thank you though i'm, I'm sorry keep keep reminding me because i'm not good at that <laughs> so um uh i uh he so he got he got um uh pulled up um uh, uh, well, uh, uh, let's see, where, where was I? Oh, um, yeah, so, so he, so he's, he spends all of 50 with the, the Millers and then he's back with the Millers for the start of the 51, but there, but he had a great start of the year in 51 for the Millers and he hit 12 home runs in 80 games, including four consecutive home runs over two games. And so he got called up, um, uh, at the all-star break and, um, uh, this is his rookie card, uh, 51 uh, Bowman. Um, he, uh, or maybe that's a 52 Bowman. I think it's a 52 Bowman. Um, so uh, so he, 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 he spells stanky and he does well. Uh, in his uh, second uh, appearance, appearance of the season, he, he was three for six with a grand slam and five runs batted in and a 14-4 win over the Cardinals. So... Um, he, it's interesting. He, uh, 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 was, he thought that DeRocher, when he, you know, the Giants were, I don't know, 10, 12 games out when he got called up, he thought, he thought DeRocher was sort of disinterested, uh, in, in, in the team at that point. It was before their hot streak. Uh, and, uh, he, uh, uh, <clears throat> of course they, they, they caught fire when they caught fire. Uh, DeRocher played Stanky and not and and not Davy, and he was mostly a, a pinch hitting occasionally and pitch running, uh, pinch pinch running. Uh, he had a, a a pretty volatile relationship with DeRocher, as uh, did most, uh, I guess, uh, <laughs> players. Uh, and he told me uh, the story, or I saw the story that. Uh, that DeRocher got all over him one time. Uh, and I think it was his rookie year because he didn't complete a double play. He got one out instead of two. Uh, and DeRocher was, was chewing him out and chewing him out and uh, dug out. And Davey finally retreated to the clubhouse and DeRocher followed him and, and finally, uh, and kept, kept at him. And uh, finally he threw, picked up an ice chest and threw it at DeRocher and that, that, finally got Leo to shut up. Uh, so uh, on the other hand, you know, there were, there were, there were, there were aspects of DeRocher's management style that he, that, that he liked, but, but it wasn't always a smooth, smooth relationship. Uh, so uh, 
the 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 uh, he really in the in the uh, playoff series um, he pinch pinch ran in in one game he he could have you know in when in in the last game in the third game in the Bobby Thompson game uh, he was on the bench and it would have made a lot of sense for uh, him to pinch run for for uh, Don Mueller when Mueller uh, broke his ankle at third uh, but Derosier uh, uh, put in uh, Hartung as all of you know. Uh, Hartung had only pinch run once. Uh, Davy had pinch run ten times in the short in the half season he was there. But uh, Hartung was more experienced, and that's probably why Leo Leo went went with him. Uh, so um, he also didn't play much in the World Series. Uh, he he had a pinch hit at bat and pinch ran. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, fifty. So so what happened after that though is that. Uh, the uh, in the off season, the car the Giants traded Stanky to to the Cardinals, um, and so that paved the way for Davey to be the starting second baseman for 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 the Giants, and 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 that's and that's exactly what he did. Um, he took over took over that role. Uh, here's a picture of the '51 Giants uh, infield. Uh, I guess yeah, this is fifty one because of the patch, but and I, I I'm not sure why Davies there and not Stanky, but uh, but anyway, it's a photo I found. Uh, I don't see any pictures. They're there, Frank. Oh. Pardon me. They're, They're there. there. Oh, I All I got is these little icons. You got to do something. I got to mute you, okay? Because he's uh, Paul's talking, okay. okay? Maybe you can click on the icon. You're, you're seeing him, Gary? Looks great. Nice picture. I have not seen this one. Okay. Um, this is uh, this is actually, I think this is a great shot of Davey uh, from 51. Um, so, um, so, uh, so, so 52, he's the, he's the uh, um, regular second baseman. Uh, there's Alvin Dark, his his Keystone mate. Uh, he had a, had a good year, solid year. Hit 13 home runs, hit 254, uh, and uh, but his back uh, had had a back issues that year. Gil Hodges plowed into him, trying to break up a double play, and it caused him to miss a, a number of games. Uh, but uh, he was still established as the as as the is the Giants' uh, second baseman? Um, this is a, this is a, I think a, I, I think this is an interesting shot uh, because he's got a he's I don't know what year this is it, it's it I don't think it's forty nine because of the uniform but he's he's got a split fingered glove and and if it's fifty one or two it's a little bit late for a split finger uh, but uh, and uh, I thought I think uh, this is. This is Davey's more most valuable baseball card. It's a 52 tops high number, and the high numbers were 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 um, uh, all thrown. You know, they're they're scarcer because they were all thrown in the Long Island Long Island sh Sound in the in the fall. Uh, but it, so so in '53, he's um, he's he's the starting second second baseman. Um, has a really great year. Uh, hit 297 in 112 games. The reason he only played 112 games is he had more back problems uh, and had to miss had had to miss some some time, substantial stretches of time because of his back. But he made the all-star team. Charlie Dressen uh, picked him for the all-star team um, <clears throat> to back up Shane Deist at, uh, at second base. Uh, it was somewhat controversial because he'd been fourth in the fan voting behind Dittmer of the Braves and Connie Ryan of the Phillies, but but Dressen liked him and said he was a great ball, a, a damn good ball player. Uh, so he he turned out he was the only uh, giant to uh, play in the uh, 53 All-Star game. And here's his 53 Bowman card. Um, and he, uh, uh, he drew a walk in the bottom of the seventh against Mike Garcia. And then uh, so he, he, he replaced Shady's in the top of the seventh and played the rest of the game and caught Barra's top uh, pop-up for the, for the final out of the game. Um, so uh, 
so this 53 card Bowman card is sort of interesting in, in that it's the number one card in the set. And so it's somewhat valuable because uh, number one cards, you know, kids in those days, we, you know, we put rubber bands around the cards. And so the top card, and if we, if we collated them by number would be on top and would have rubber band uh, marks all over it. Uh, so uh, a, a good condition 53 Bowman card of Davies is pretty valuable. Um, and here's uh, here's the 53 tops card of Davy. Uh, so uh, here's uh, and here's the 54 Bowman card. Um, so it, 54, of course, the Giants had a great year, uh, and and Davy was the second baseman. Uh, he started 142 games for the Giants at second base. Uh, and he only hit 222, uh, but he fielded very, very well and uh, was the, led the led the league in fielding percentage, committing 14 errors, only 14 errors, 982 fielding percentage. He his he didn't hit well in the World Series either. Uh, let's see, I think this yeah here's the Giants starting 54 uh, starting lineup, uh, and uh, you can see. Uh, Davies the second to the left from the left by Whitey Lockman there and by uh I guess that's Hank Thompson. Um and uh uh so in the World Series he he's uh he he, he was hitless in 12 at bats. He did have a great suicide squeeze in the top of the of game three in the top of the third in game three to give them a four nothing lead in a game that they won six to two. So that game, uh, he hit a long home run. That was a long ball. That was fouled by, uh, about a foot. It would have been a home run. Uh, and, um, uh, had it been fair, uh, and, and he was, he was running hard. So he, it's almost a second by the time it, the ball is marked is called foul. And so he, when he goes by the mound, Mike Garcia, the pitcher said, uh, I must have made that a bit too good. And Davey, who had a great wit, said, uh, "You must, you must have if I hit it that well." Uh, so, um, and I, I pulled some uh, some sort of action shots just to show him in action. Around this is sliding sliding home against the Dodgers in '54. Uh, this is an interesting card. Uh, was a New York Journal American card set uh, that, that went out in 54, had all the New York teams. It was just New York teams. So all the Dodgers, the Yankees and the, and the Giants. Uh, so there's a, there's a maze, one of these, there's a mantle, one of these. Uh, uh, they're sort of fun to collect actually. And, and re relatively inexpensive. Uh, <clears throat> this is a, uh, this is Davey sliding home in 54 against the, against the pirates. Um, uh, this is a good action shot from the 54 World Series. That's uh, Dave Philly of the Indians trying to break up a double play. And you can see to sit Davey uh, sort of toppling. Uh, here's a here's a, another shot from the 54 World Series. Uh, and that's Vic Wirt sliding into second. And Davey jumping over him. Uh, And uh, and this is also from the '54 series, uh, and that uh, I think that's uh, Vic Wirtz trying to get back to the bag, uh, Davy Covery. Uh, so um, so '55 comes around, and uh, you all are 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 well aware of uh, the rivalry between the Dodgers and the Giants. Uh, so we interrupted early in the 55 season and uh, Davey was sort of the unwitting victim of it. Um, this is, this is sort of, uh, uh, you know, a, a, an issue that's been somewhat controversial. And I, and I talked to Davey about his take on it, uh, but he, uh, so uh, Sal Magley was, was, was pitching uh, for the giants and, uh, and, and, you know, started the game by, by, um, I think hitting Sandy Amaros in the first inning and then, 
and then uh, threw a pitch behind Jackie Robinson, uh, and then Jackie ended up striking out. So next time up, you know, Jackie what did what Jackie does, and he he bunted down the first baseline because he was going to clobber Magley when he went over to cover to to field the ball. Magley never moved uh, off of the mound, and so so Lockman came in and and fielded the bunt and um, threw to Davey covering. And Davey uh, was, was standing still, uh, and Robinson just plowed into him and, and sent him flying. And uh, so, you know, there's some versions of the, that story that say that Davey was wheeled off in a stretcher, and it's not it's not true. He was, he was, he stayed in the game, and, and I think, I think it, it maybe was replaced for a, by a pinch hitter late in the game. Uh, so, um, okay. so uh, did did Jackie Robinson cause the end of Davy's career? Well, well, he didn't help it any. Um, he, but Davy had the chronic back injury, and this exacerbated it. And so he he played some after that incident. He went. He had a four for four oh. game against the Cardinals. And uh, uh, here's another shot of Davy Fielding. Uh, oh, shot. And um, uh, he, uh, but he was really, una- he was just in a lot of pain. And so they sent him to the Mayo Clinic, uh, the Giants sent him to the Mayo Clinic, and, and he uh, uh, had, uh, was diagnosed with with a with a, with a with a narrowing of the spine condition and told that if he continued to uh, to uh, um, play that he could uh, be crippled and so he was really forced to retire. Uh, his last appearance was July thirty first of fifty five. He was twenty seven years old, so he was diagnosed with an arthritic spinal condition. Uh, he he. Uh, <coughs> um, he didn't really blame Robinson. He thought, you know, he understood that Robinson had, t- had gone through a lot, but he he did think that, you know, most of that had been was over by then. And and uh, Robinson, you know, on the on his, for his side of the story, I've I've read about his reaction was that was he regard he felt really badly about that, and he it was um, he he is it was quoted with uh, by uh, telling. Uh, who was it? Uh, uh, um, Roger Kahn, that that was the toughest period of his uh, of his of his career after he rolled uh, rolled over. Uh, thank you, rolled over uh, Davy Robinson that Davy Williams in that uh, in that uh, game, uh, fifty-five game against uh, the Giants. So um, uh, this is probably a spring training. Uh, uh, shot from one of those years so uh, it, it it i mean he was you know considering he was just 27 and and how good he could have been without the back problems it, it really is sort of sad uh that he didn't have a longer career one thing i wanted to mention is during that uh year he um uh, on, on may on may 28th and 55 uh, in a nationally televised game against the Dodgers and the Polo Grounds, he made an incredible uh, running catch against Jackie Robinson. A Texas, there were runners on first and second, and Robinson lifted a Texas leaguer uh, <clears throat> way behind first, and uh, and uh, Davey made an incredible running juggling catch and threw to second uh, to double off. Uh, I think it was Hodges, and then who, and then. And then they managed to throw out throw out Ferrillo at first too. So it's a triple play, and there was a uh, photo of it that appeared in Sports Illustrated uh, the next week or two, uh, showing showing Davies' play and sort of highlighting it. So that was his sort of one, maybe his last uh, great uh, uh, hurrah on the baseball field. He uh, after uh, fifty five. Uh, Rigney was the manager in 56 and 57 and hired Davey as a coach. So he had two years as a coach for the Giants. And uh, he, um, uh, and and then uh, uh, they 
Greeny decided to to change uh, change uh, the his coaching the coaching staff and hire all new coaches because they were had had finished in sixth place two straight years. And so Davey came back home to Dallas and 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 became the manager of the Dallas Rangers in the Texas League um, in uh, 50, in fifty fifty nine. This was all also when the Giants obviously moved to San Francisco when they originally changed coaches, all of his coaches. So uh, he put him uh, Davey put himself on the active roster uh, in for in uh, for the uh, Dallas Rangers and. Uh, hit 303 and 39 plate appearances. He was just 30 years old. But something happened, and I never have found out exactly what happened uh, with uh, Davey and the owner and the ma general manager of the of, of Dallas, and, and he he got replaced about halfway through the season. And that was the end of uh, his formal uh, attachment to, to baseball. Uh, uh, this is a great George Brace photo from the polo ground uh, from uh, Wrigley Field. You see, you know, I just messed that up. Sorry. Uh, <clears throat> and um, this is this is uh, this is Davy's last baseball card, uh, fifty-five Bowman. Um, and uh, here's a action shot from fifty-five against the Phillies uh, before he had to retire. Um, so, um, uh, after baseball, uh, Davey, uh, had, uh, sort of a tough go. Uh, I think he had trouble transitioning. Uh, he had a number of different jobs. Um, he worked as a, as a, a criminal investigator for, the, for that Dallas County. And at one point it was a process server. Uh, he also worked, uh, for a heavy equipment company as an expediter and had, stints with companies like uh, Bell Helicopter and McDonnell Douglas. Um, he uh, unfortunately, he lost his wife, Joy, to a brain aneurysm in 1984. Um, I guess they'd been married about 36 years. Uh, he, he never remarried, uh, but uh, he uh, 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 had a longtime friend who I knew uh, pretty well named Sue Cates. They were, they, they were, they were, they were partners. Uh, she had lost her husband about a year before Davy's uh, wife died, and and they were a couple for the rest of their lives. Although they never married, Davy also uh, lost like two of his four children died before he did. Uh, his, his son uh, had um, uh, serious uh, drug problems, uh, and. Um, was just never able to 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 uh, kick uh, the the addiction problem. So, um, but you know he he was uh, he was uh, he was always cheerful and always happy and 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 uh, just a, a pleasure to be around. The one, the one thing he didn't like, which I think I always thought was a little bit funny, was he didn't like being the answer to a trivia question. You know, and the the trivia question that he's an answer. Well, does anybody know what the trivia question needs an answer to? The common trivia question needs an answer to? I think it was a cutoff. Yeah. Who, who, I mean, who it, was it, the relay person in the Willie Mays home run? Uh, Willie Mays catch. That's yeah. right. Who caught Who caught the throw? <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> Davey Williams. So he, yeah. for, for some reason, he, he he didn't like being the answer to the trivia question. But, uh, but he was... Uh, he was a he was a great guy. He he he, he lived to be eighty one, and and uh, uh, I wish he'd lived longer because uh, really in, in, in enjoyed uh, being his friend. Uh, and uh, he can, you know it's one of those, but uh, what might have been careers uh, he could have really been exceptional. He was clearly an exceptional athlete, uh, and in uh, a in a fine baseball player, but for but for his back injury. So that's uh that's uh I'm happy to take questions. Paul, you want to give me back the screen? Uh yeah. How do I do that? Uh you, stop, you share. stop share. That's yeah. It. yeah, yeah. Paul, exceptional, just like you know, you won on Larry Jensen. So much, much appreciated. Um, you know, again, it's great insight on some of the uh from the Giants who didn't get much ink per se from like a, a book. Um, you know, a biography or anything like that. 
So this was exceptional. My one question to you, Paul, is uh, you called yourself an old codger, which you're not, but uh, who, who, anybody in your uh, years of following baseball who you consider very much similar to uh, Davey Williams? Uh, you, you mean in, in terms of uh, good, good but could have been great? Yes, and maybe a second baseman who, who – who you think you know reminds you of him? Second, oh, that, oh uh, uh, that's a good question. Um, do you have somebody in mind? No, I don't. I was hoping you uh, would, so I could relate. <laughs> well, Why don't you know, think I, about I, it? And if something comes okay. up in your mind, uh, and if not, no biggie. Let's go to uh, <laughs> Mr. Mar. You are up. Oh, well, thanks, Paul. Um, it was uh, reliving memories again. Here's the book I bought the last time you were uh, at our meeting. I love the book. Uh, it brings back fond memories uh, as uh, an adolescent growing up and idolizing the Giants. I saw Davey Williams play. I remember that 54 team. I was seven years old at the time. I was fully entrenched in baseball, thanks to my old man, you know, who uh, uh, bought me a Giants uniform and I wore number 25, Whitey Lockman, before Mays was brought up. But here's the questions I have. Um, uh, where did the name Crackers come from? Was Do they make Crackers in the South? Is that why uh, the name came up? That's one of my first questions. Uh, do you have an answer to that one? Nope. I I, I don't. Uh, yeah, I, that's a that's a good question. I mean, uh, there've been Southern cracker. You know, the Southern people have been called crackers for a long time, and I'm I don't think it was always as pejorative as it is now. So, but I'm not sure how it originated. <laughs> well, uh, I I I really love the book, and. Uh, here, oh, here's my my question sheet here. Um, let's see. Um, I never saw managers, well, in, in modern times, on camera, reprimand players like Billy Martin and Leo DeRosha. I, I wonder, I guess it could be happening behind closed doors, but I never see it in a game anymore. Are managers intimidated because the players make so much more than them? What's your opinion on that? Um, I think there's, I think there's just a general di different managerial style. It, and maybe it is because the players make so much money, but I think, uh, you know, I'm just, I'm just thinking of Bruce uh, Bochy who, who his style I mean, is so successful with the, with, you know, the Giants, Rangers, Padres, whoever he manages, he's he's great, and he is not an in-your-face guy at all. Uh, and uh, you know Eddie Eddie Sawyer, who who uh, was the WizKids manager in, in this in the era that we remember, uh, was a hands-off kind of guy too. Uh, and uh, uh, he he was an earlier purveyor of just let him play, put him out there and let him play. Uh, it's such a the baseball season is such a long grind. Uh, I think I think there's just more of an attitude that being an even keel for that 162 game season is the best approach. But of course, Derosier was a very successful manager, and and but he but he must have thought that Davey could take it, you know, because uh, or, or maybe he just lost control because he never treated Mays that way, right? that we know of i mean he treated mays with you know to, you know with a lot of love and support uh so uh i, I leo is leo is a complicated person to say the least well thank you paul and kudos to a great book it'll well, forever you. be in, in my heart <laughs> thank you it was a lot of fun to do really a lot of fun thank you mars mr burbage you're up Paul, thank you very much. Uh, growing up in Jersey City, I played second baseman, and, and Davey Williams was my idol. <laughs> he oh, was my is that idol. right? I was wondering if 
Davey ever had commented on what happened afterward, after he got knocked down, and the Giants went into the dugout, and they said, we got to retaliate. And then in the top of the fifth inning, Alvin Dark at the double down the left field line in Ebbets Field, and he didn't stop at second base. He decided he was going to run right into third base and knock Robinson for a loop, and he did. And Robinson got knocked, the ball got knocked away, and Robinson, Dark was safe. I remember I read Herman Frank said, you got to be crazy doing something like that in Evans Field. But yeah. did Avey ever respond to, to say anything about that retaliation? You know, not that I recall. You know, one of, one of my great regrets, Davey died in 2009. My, one of my great regrets is I did not formally interview him. You know, I didn't get him on tape. Uh, I, I, you know, I, I, and because so, so the, you know, the conversations we had were, more casual over lunch and, and, and that sort of thing. And I, and I, I really regret that because uh, I did interview a lot of the, when I did the WizKids book earlier, I did interview all those guys and I have that record, you know, I could add, and I, and it, I, it was just, anyway, I didn't, I, so I, the answer to your question is I, I, I don't remember Davey talking about the aftermath. I know that he told me that he stayed in the game and uh, you know, and, and, uh, that he didn't really uh, resent Robinson because of all that Rob that much because of all that Robinson had had uh, had taken over the years. But as you know, I mean, as you well know, I mean, Robinson, and especially by fifty five, he was a stocky guy. I mean, yeah, for Dark to, course, Dark was Dark a played football, football player fellas, too. You. Right, yeah. right, but still. So Doc, Doc said he felt that that was his responsibility as captain to yeah. retaliate. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, John. Well, again, thank you very much, Paul. My pleasure. And Thanks. The man with the pipes, Mr. <laughs> Tev. Paul, it's great to see you. I always love your research work and your presentations are great. Uh, a thought, a question, and a couple of answers. My thought, don't ever let your wife make you proficient on Zoom because you don't want the SMU administration to know that you can teach online classes. <laughs> you don't want to do that. <laughs> uh, my question, uh, you kind of touched on it a little bit about the catch, him being the relay guy on the catch. In your lunches, did he ever talk about the catch and what he thought about it or any insights about it? You know, uh, yeah, he just, he, he, uh, he his his take was just sort of, he was where he was supposed to be, and they were worried about uh, who was it. Uh, uh, who was on second base? The uh, was it was it Dobie on second, and they were worried so. about him yeah. scoring yes. on 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 the and and so I mean that was his you know he his mindset was just that of a ball player in the middle of a game doing what he was supposed to do. Uh, I don't think he realized. I don't think he. I, I you know he wasn't. I know I remember him telling me he wasn't surprised that Mace caught the ball. And so he was where he was supposed to be. You know, I mean, they had a lot of confidence in Willie. Amazing. Amazing. <laughs> and that, okay. and as you know, the Polo Grounds center field was forever. So, so with Mays' ability and and, and, and and speed and the depth of the Polo Grounds, I, I think they fully expected him to catch it. Okay. An answer to Gary's question is something for you to have some fun researching since you're there in the Metroplex. A, a what could have been a, a classmate of mine in high school former Texas Rangers second baseman, about 80-81. His name was Mike Richard. Uh, AAA batting champ came up, and uh, Disco Dan Ford took him out on a botched double play, wrecked his knee, and he was never the same. Mm -hmm. uh, and then on Mars's question on the crackers, everything I've read, kind of a low-class, working-class person. It was, it was not a derogatory term. Uh, the Atlanta crackers were owned up through 48 or 49 by Coca-Cola, uh, and a tremendously run operation. Uh, but no, it was not a, uh, not really regarded as a negative uh, term as it is now. But Paul, thanks. It's great to see you. Yeah, thanks. Good to see you, Dan. Thank you. Dan, thanks for your insights. Mr. Weinberg. Paul, I love your presentation. Um, I have just a quick comment and then a question. Um, <clears throat> I saw my first game July 10th, 1954. I was two months shy of my ninth birthday. I looked up the box score, which I I have easily on my phone. Davey Williams was the second baseman. I don't remember 
seeing him because my eyes were on Willie Mays the whole game. <laughs> but um, we were seated in right field. But Davey Williams, according to the box score, which I'm sure is correct, went batted seventh, went one for four with an RBI. So I, although my brain doesn't remember, my eyes did see Davey Williams play. For sure. Um, I don't believe I'm asking this question. I don't know what's going on. I have to check with my own physician. But did Davey ever discuss the alleged uh, sign issue in 1951? You know what I'm talking about. I can't. I can't I, utter the word that usually <laughs> call a sign. You know, uh, he 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 didn't. He I, I don't recall him ever. Uh, I don't, and I don't recall that I asked him about it, which is my, again, my. That's, short, that's, that's short good. Coming. I'll add you to my uh, 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 array of people who say it never happened. <laughs> Thanks, Paul. I, 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 you're wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you. Thank you for your question. I wish I had a better answer. Howard, you. No, your answer. Your answer is fine. He didn't. <laughs> If it happened, he would have said something, so it didn't happen. That's how I'm going with it. That's okay, my that's, story, and I'm okay. sticking with it. That's your story. Okay. Howard, go ahead. Unmute, Howard. Howard, you have to unmute. Okay. Um, yeah, hi, Paul. One quick reference back to, kind of back to the crackers. Not, not really, but my son went to grad school down in uh, Georgia, Columbus, Georgia, he took us over the river into Alabama where we toured some of the civil rights stuff. And we were in Montgomery and we passed a baseball stadium. There's a minor league team there called the Montgomery Biscuits. So crackers sounds a lot better than biscuits. I could see a team being named crackers. Maybe it refers to people, but biscuits, um, that kind of blew me away. It, was, it must've been at least a double A team because it was a very nice ballpark and it was pretty close to the uh, Capitol building over there. So um, just a little point of reference over there about the South. Uh, I just have one quick uh, question for you. Uh, was there ever a, uh, an exact diagnosis of Davy's back position, uh, the, the, uh, back condition? The reason I ask is because here in New York uh, City later on, much later on, we had David Wright of the Mets and he contracted spinal stenosis and he had to retire. Now, now he, I think, was a little bit older than 27. I think he was on the wrong side of 30. Uh, he went into rehab for about three years, really trying to get make it back, uh, no pun intended. Uh, but he eventually had a call to career and they gave him a big night at uh, City Field. He was and he was an infielder, too, as you probably know. He was a third baseman. So spinal stenosis sounds a lot like what Davey Williams might have had, in which the spine is narrowing a little bit. It prevented him from using his arms. He was in a lot of pain. He needed a lot of rehab, physical therapy. So uh, obviously I'm not a doctor, but do you know if, if what the exact diagnosis was of uh, Davy's condition? I, th I think from the sources that I looked at it at the time is the, the, the closest was an arthritic spinal condition. It could have been spinal stenosis. Uh, you know, uh, the, the, maybe the most one of the most no noteworthy people that had that diagnosis was Cooper Manning, Archie's uh, oldest son, who okay, uh, you know, who was was a great athlete, was going to play at Ole Miss with with, uh, with Peyton. We've gone to Ole Miss. He was the older brother. Cooper's the older brother. And Peyton right. Had, I, yeah, I know. Cooper, Miss. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, he he had spinal stenosis, which is why that he had to give up football his freshman year at Ole Miss. So, um, so and because he was told that he, a wrong kind of hit would paralyze him. So, uh, it, and they must, I'm not obviously a doctor either, but it, it, it must be sort of a closely related conditions. Uh, I you know, know that I know that Davey had you know when I when I saw him he he didn't seem to uh, I mean he was uh, he was fully ambulatory when I knew him late in his life he, he wasn't on a walker or anything like that so uh, you know his his he, he I, I don't remember him complaining or or about back pain or being not you know immobile at all uh, but maybe it's because he stopped playing. Well, that's the situation with David Wright. Uh, he he lived a fairly, and he is living a fairly normal life. He's still involved in baseball. I believe he lives out on the West Coast. But yeah. I think he was told that if he continued to play, there was a risk of some sort of paralysis or something even, you know, yeah. worse or just as bad. So, and he, yeah. I, I don't know how old, he, I don't remember how old David was. He was over 
30, I think, uh, a few years over 30. He played about but, 10 years, didn't he? Yeah, now there's talk he's eligible for the Hall of Fame, but yeah. because he didn't play long enough, you know, Ralph kind of played 10 years and he got into the Hall of Fame because he had something like, uh, I don't know, 350 home runs or something like that. But the thing against David Wright now is that they're saying he maybe, because his career was cut short, you know, it didn't extend more into his elderly baseball years. Uh, he may not never make it into Cooperstown, but he was he's eligible for next year again. He wasn't uh, he got enough votes to be eligible for next year. So speaking of people, speaking of short careers that people should be in the Hall of Fame, and Lefty O'Neill comes to mind. Uh, yeah, but, he did. did anybody else have a question before I ask one more question? Thank you, Paul. Paul, I got to ask you this um, again. You're very involved in Saber. Tremendous. The Willie Mays book, Saber, tremendous. Um, any thought, since it's the 70th anniversary, um, and the last time the Giants won the World Series in New York of a compilation of, of the 1954 Giants? I know this is a giant group, but I mean, last the last time they ever won in New York, the state won in New York. I think it would be a you know a bestseller at least with our group. Uh, you know that's a great question, and um, he, here's the way Saber works. Um, I, I'm I'm sure a number of of of, of, of people out there are probably Saber members. Uh, they they're very receptive to ideas. <laughs> And and to to people that want to, uh, I mean, in my case, uh, uh, you know, I, I wanted, I it was my it was my idea to do the fifty one Giants, uh, and so, you know, I was willing to do the work, and 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 it, but you know, there were I don't know forty or fifty people worked on that book uh, because they you know they put out a call to the to the membership. But uh, so uh, I, I mean, a fifty-four giant book makes a lot of sense, uh, and 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 they would what they would do, they would reuse a lot of the same biographies that are in the fifty-one book, right? There's no reason to rewrite those biographies, so they 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 would be used, and then there'd be you know some of the other parts, of the, you know, the the game series and all the big games and all that would be done new, uh, and then new players sometimes. Uh, the Saber Bio Project has a have has a lot of bios online of players that are not in a book, and so those to the extent that those bios already exist, you know they could be put in a book. So it would be pretty easy to, relatively speaking, to put together a Saber publication on the Fifty Four Giants. I mean, it would would just somebody be somebody wanting you know be willing to sort of carry carry the load and 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 oversee it, edit it you know be be the be the producer sort of um i i know jim mully would love to see some johnny antonelli in there so uh, yeah exactly <laughs> right john burbage you uh you you should be the man you, <laughs> yeah you, you know paul let me ask you were you the, were you was your book the first book that they published uh no they they um uh, they have done They'd done a number before that. Okay. Um, uh, uh, they because uh, I because I participated in some uh, uh, earlier ones. I mean, they they've uh, I'm trying to remember the order of things. I mean, they they did one. They I, I, I was involved in one on the uh, uh, let's see, thirty five Tigers. Uh, okay. And, you know, so all over the place. Uh, uh, they, they, oh, um, for uh, see, they did one on the fifty. I think they did one on the fifty-four Indians, actually. Uh, that I because I wrote the Bob Feller uh, biography for that. Okay. Um, and uh, 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 there's been a couple of Dodger. Uh, there's at least one on on the on one of the Dodgers teams. I can't remember which one. Uh, but that I, I I remember I did Tommy Brown, so it must have been forty-seven or forty-eight. Uh, no, it would have been forty-seven Dodgers uh, with Tommy Brown. As and I, mu I, must, I must tell you, in a complimentary manner, we've gotten tremendous mileage with with guest speakers on this. Book. Yeah, you have, and, and it's been fabulous. And and the Mays book, you know, the new one also. Yeah. So 
maybe if you ever are involved in a meeting, you're a big wig. Maybe you could bring 54 up. You never know what happens. <laughs> yeah, I'm Gary, not a big wig, I... but I, I'll do it. Harvey, Gary, go ahead, I... Harvey. Oh, Paul, I, I want to dwell a bit. We're, we're entering the uh, the 224-24 um, year of Willie. Um, why, why was Davey uh, adverse to discussing the fact that he was the cutoff man on that great play? You know, I, that, I thought it was strange. Uh, he, I think he just thought he was doing his job. You know, he was just, and and it wasn't a big deal. And and uh, you know, I don't, I don't, I think he he didn't want to be remembered for that. <laughs> you know, so. Um, I mean, I don't, I, I, I don't even see that as trivia. That's part of the play. Yeah. Oh yeah, knew, yeah. Willie knew where to throw the ball. He knew where his teammate would be. Right. And he kept he kept Doby at second base, and the Giants, they did, Cleveland didn't score, and the Giants won an extra innings. You figure it out, you know. Yeah. And then we go yeah. on a sweep. Yeah, yeah. I I, I think that maybe, uh, you know, he. I'm not sure. You know, he he made the All Star team. He had you know he had had some really great moments, and, and I think he just didn't like. I didn't. I think he just didn't like the fact that that was. What many people remember. Well, he's for. he's he's not a trivia question to this group. I'll tell you that. No, no he's not. <laughs> That's right. Oh, yeah. That's oh, why I got it's fun one, to talk to you guys. One final question or comment. Uh, we know that you're in Texas. Did you go to the World Series parade? I didn't. I did not go to the World Series this time. I did in in 2010 and 11, but but I I did not. I, I watched it on TV. You know, you have the ticket our, prices have, have our, gone way up. You have our beloved manager there. That's why you guys. Yes. Tumble. He's beloved here too. I'll tell you. I'm sure of that. Guys, <laughs> why don't we give it up? Years. <laughs> give it up for Paul Rogers. Thank Paul, you. please. Thank you, Paul. Thank Paul, you. Thank you. Great. Please uh, don't hesitate to come back. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Be well, guys. Uh, we'll see each other next Wednesday. Willie Mays Appreciation Day. I'll hang around here for a while if anybody wants to talk some baseball. Have a great night, everybody.